Okay, okay. I started recording now. I started recording? Okay, thank you, Victor. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync of July 30, 2018. Uh, this is an addition, like a, a smaller group than other meetings because, uh, as I was just mentioning, um, a lot of people are inside metal words right now crossing an ocean, and so they cannot log in and attend this call. But some of them definitely left some notes that we can like um, go through here. Uh, let's go into the weekly update as usual, and let's go by order of how people shared it on the clip. Uh, before we jump into that, uh, we have a volunteer note taker. Can I get a volunteer? Jacob, thank you so much for always taking that responsibility. Um, <laughs> thank you. Cool. Okay, so let's go into updates. Alan Shaw, want to share if anything? Sure thing. Uh, so y last week was um, doing a whole load of work to get JS IPFS 031 out the door, uh, rejiggled the things that were going in it, um, and uh, essentially uh, it, it included a new libptp, uh, some support for raw leaves, and a, uh, a whole bunch of work to achieve, re-achieve connectivity magic between JS IPFS and the rest of the IPFS world. Um, so yeah, that, I, that was most of my week. Um, I also, before that, fixed a, an issue with um, if, if during boot time um, your IPFS node errored, then the error event would be emitted twice. And if you had attached a once listener onto the error event, then you'd get that, but then your node process would be <laughs> exited the second time it's, it, uh, it was fired. So that's, that was no good. So I quickly, um, well, as good as I could, fix that. Um, uh, and then just after I'd released JS IPFS 031, I got, a, I got pinged from uh, Vasco saying that... Um, the new preload stuff doesn't work in service workers. And I found out that in service workers, they deprecated the XML HTTP request API, and it's also not available at all. Um, so that's, that's fun times. And I didn't know about it because we don't run our tests on service work workers. We run them on web workers, and there's no examples with service workers in the example folder. So I didn't see it until after. Uh, so what I did was just switch to using a fetch API. The, what I didn't know, which you, you might not have known either, is that I was under the impression that with fetch you can abort an equ a request, but you can now, so um, that's rad. Um, it, 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 we need to abort stuff because potentially the preload requests that we're making, because they're done in async, um, they might still be in flight when we try and stop the node. So uh, if we try and stop the node while stuff is preloading, we don't want the preload requests to keep the process open. So we, uh, we, we cancel them, basically. So anyway, I replaced it with fetch. Um, it gets aborted now when you stop, if you stop the node. Um, and uh, Vasco tested it, and so did Hugo, I think. Um, and it went in. I released a 0.31.1 already. So um, fun times. Um, I've also been doing a or writing a talk for DWeb Summit. I will see you there if you are going to be there. So um, that's me this week. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I put a couple of other things that, if I have time to do, I will do. Like I've got a PR for IPFS Resolve and an IPLD powered DAG get that. If I have time, I might look into them. That's me. Sorry, that was a bit long. No, that's, that's great. And congrats uh, for releasing just IPFS 031. Congrats to everyone that like, participated in the Never. Uh, it's awesome to finally get that experience to users as we wanted. Um, one, one note there is let's make sure to sync as a team next week uh, on Connectivity Magic. Like it still is one big priority of this quarter. And let's not fool ourselves. We just gave ourselves a little bit more of um, air. To, to breed uh, with uh, the, the solution number one that we shipped. There are still two other things, P delegated peer routing and content routing and the full um, peer routing and, and content routing. And, and like, let's continue putting energy there as we've put to, to get a solution because yeah, we, we really want to have that finished by this quarter and no later. And we are super close. Uh, let's 
just making sure that we don't get distracted um, or or think that it's already solved. Um, so on that finding the fetch um, slash like things that work on service workers, definitely add a test. Probably you already did, uh, but like or at least clearly they should like to add tests to run things on service workers. And this like feeds right into like um, things that run on Jenkins. Right now we have like this huge pipeline of like uh, CLI tests, HTTPI tests, core tests, and then browser tests, and then like web worker tests. And like it takes a lot of time and we really need to break, 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 break those into separate steps and also add the service worker just make sure like everything runs nicely and probably we should like always just run the web worker and the service worker test on ci not on on local otherwise like just like steals a lot of time from from development so uh create an issue to add a test and i got these notes so that we make sure to, to think about it um as soon as possible all yeah, right I had, so, a, I had a look at yeah, this year Sorry, I had a look at Azure. Um, we'd probably have to add it there, I'm, I'm guessing. And um, there is a Karma ser service worker plugin, so it should be possible. Yeah, yeah, you have to add it there. And then like you have to use like just command line flex to then create different like runs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so it's more like a, a Jenkins configuration thing right now than like more tooling. Um, I know like Victor is on top of this, like it has been something that we talked about a lot in the past. I guess it's just like a question of like time to do it, then then necessarily like a challenge technical challenge. Any other questions for Alan? All right, great. Thank you. Let's go to the next one. Volker is not here. Basically, I've spent a lot of time building like the proto school for IPLD. That's pretty cool. Like if you haven't checked it out, check proto.school and give him feedback. Uh, it has a bunch of lessons. And I, I can put it here, that's cool. Um, and it, it's like a very good format to like do IPFS tutorials. Uh, we should repurpose that to other things, not just IPLD. Vasco also is not here. Like I know that Vasco um, and Hugo and Andre and Pedro have been like super busy with just IPFS.io. Like the website is getting nicer and nicer by the day, and like with all the bugs fixed, like the experience is right, and like getting more performant. There's still some things to do, um, but like you can take a peek at the repo just at IPFS.io, install it and run and and give feedback. Like if you find something that it's off, like Alan did a great review today, and that was super helpful to get like another pair of eyes to go through things and to remind us uh, of like things that we missed. So if you have time to do that, um, go for it. Uh, Travis is also not attending and he didn't get to do anything this week, but he has a lot of goals for this one, which is merge open V2 branch of IPTP. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, let's follow up with him uh, on that. Next up, we have Jacob. Jacob, share with us your update. Uh, so I've primarily been working on peer and content routing. Um, so I fix some flakiness in the tests for both of those modules because they were depending on a lot of external stuff. Um, so that I got rid of that and made that more stable. Um, I also have working with that and something Pedro brought up in terms of like configuring the modules. Uh, I created the PR in JSIPFS to allow for a factory for creating libp2p in configuration. Um, so just starting that conversation in there. Um, there's also an example in there. I think that helps make things a bit cleaner for when people need to get really custom with libp2p configuration in JSIPFS. Um, I think that'll make that easier. And then when we do um, peer and content routing for delegates, that will make that easier as well. Um, I'm also working on, currently there's some stuff that Lars is working on in exposing um, HTPI, HTTP API endpoints. Um, on the Go server so that we can actually use that as a delegate router. Um, I'm working on making that interoperable in JSIPFS and that will be, um, I think that's going to be configurable on Go, so I'll make that configurable as J in JSIPFS so only those delegate routes will turn on if we say that this node is going to be a delegate. Um, and with that, then we should be able to get the peer and content routing uh, modules plugged into libp2p, so then we can use the HTPI endpoint for, for delegate routing. So I'll be working on that um, the rest of this week, and then I will be out uh, Wednesday to Wednesday. So, but those are the things that I will be working on in the meantime. 
All right. Uh, thank you so much for the update. One thing that uh, it's good for you to have in mind is circuit relay. Like, I'm not being uh, successful at running those tests on the interop test suites. Like, you can see a PR. Supposedly, with the multiple exchanges on YPFS, they should work flawlessly, but that's not the case. And so, it's it means like something is weird there. Um, and and I, I didn't have the time to debug it. Uh, in the past, we thought it was the multiplex. The multiplex was fixed. We got like exchanging files fixed again. Like we can like transfer really large files, which means like we can open multiple bits of streams. So, like the the multiplex system is right. It's just a circuit relay, it's not there. And, and like it even like breaks sometimes on like JS, JS, JS. So it's clearly something wrong in implementation, or maybe some of the refactors on Swarm that like change things and like the circuit relay just like misbehaving. Um, but that, that will bite you when you want to try peer routing and content routing because you will need circuit relay to make that successful uh, across JSAP Fest, not just the, the module. Um, so, so definitely check those and, and see if you can understand what's up there. Um, and yeah, I don't have any comments. Uh, any more comments for Jacob or questions? All right. By the way, if I sound like I always speak very fast, but like if I'm speaking very fast today, it's just because I I, I feel the jet lag like attacking me, <laughs> and I, I'm trying to like keep myself coherent right now. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. This is so good, Um Okay, cool. I'll go to my updates. Basically, I did the go IPS 0417 release that's on M and and no just when I actually should pass uh, that knowledge how to do that uh, to someone else right now I think I'm the only one that dares to touch those modules because like the version numbers are really key um, and and the readme's are there but like they're not necessarily out like up to date but yeah did that like updated the YPFS uh, the IPFS interrupt tests um, increased the the size of like the files that get transferred and I was really happy to see like large files get transferred really nicely as well, of course. Uh, there's, there's like some interesting cases where go to JS like takes um, like X and then JS to go takes X uh, divided by two, so like half all the time. So uh, something to debug as well, like why go to JS takes more time than JS to go. I can do it if you want to share. Oh yeah, totally, totally. Uh, and maybe we can just like go through it once we are together here on the side of the the big pool, uh, the big Atlantic pool. Um, and yeah, lots of work for the website, man. Like so much stuff, right? Like the Vaps workshop, the Merkel, like fortunately, like we are a pretty great team. And so different people have been like taking the leadership, like writing the content and preparing the talks and, and like super grateful for that. And like, it's really, it's really good like we work with all this like all the people uh but like it still takes my time so i never, didn't have time to like really dig into just ipfs issues at all uh, it has been just like the web the web the web um lots of work on the just ipfs on your website as well like it's almost there um right now it's more like just tweaking polishing and and like making sure it, it if it breaks like it doesn't scream at the user's faces but like actually gives them like some helpful uh message that they can then report back and and yeah, like for for this week, it's really like launch this like amazing web page for JSIPFS and and like the web summit stuff. That that is my focus. Uh, Peter, you have a question for me? Yeah, uh, speaking about the web summit. So the infra team has like a list of all the things we need to be doing before the web summit. Does the yeah. JavaScript team have a similar list? Uh, for the, what the JavaScript team needs to do before the the web summit, or for what we need from the infra team to do before the web summit. No, so the infra team already have everything that we have through before DevOps, but for the the JavaScript team, like issues you have to complete before the web summit. Uh, that is a good point. We never created the issue like with the, the list of things, uh, but we knew that like it was releasing the 031 of JSAPFS, um, which then had some dependencies on the infra side as well, which you, you guys already finished, so that was great. And then it's really preparing all these workshops and talks. And, and so 
it's kind of like instead of like having one single list for JS core dev, it was more okay. We have all these goals, like the workshops, the launching the website, and from those that like dependencies that need to be happen. And right now, uh, we are pretty much like close to conclusion. Um, unless like someone feels that they don't totally know if they have something to do for still left. Uh, if that is the case, let me know, and I, I can I can enlighten you. Uh, with the knowledge of like what you should be uh, worried about before the web summit, but but like I, I guess like from my perspective, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I knew I knew you. Like I don't think there's like a huge burning fire right now that like someone needs to put out. I think like we are pretty like close and like like zero three one got shipped. Connectivity magic. Like people can like fetch their files. The JSIPFS that I use web page does the service worker things gateway, which is really nice. Um, and then the talks are happening. Um, we are in the last round of like feedback to the talks and to the workshops. We are going to do some trial runs today. So um, it should be good. Or at least I'm optimistic. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. That's okay. So just, just to capture the whole thing. I'm really thinking about like JS Core Dev, and that means like JS Security Peer, JS IPFS, JS IPFS IO. There is like some open questions on DApps, so like about the reliability and uh, stability of peer path. So, um, but but I, there's like a couple of issues on the DWeb repo that we are tracking those, and I, I think you are on there, Victor. Cool, thank you. All right, any other questions for me? All right, let's go to Machi. So uh, I was mainly working on test peer IDs. I made the whole thing in a day. And I also noticed that I can make uh, the JS libpdp crypto key generation faster with URSA. Um, but I created a fork of this module because it's a native module. Um, it will fail to compile on some systems. And the new version uh, that I forked uh, when it fails, then it does not block installation, so it can be used. And it try catch wrapper, so if URSA is unavailable, it just uses the old uh, key pair module. And um, I also fixed a bunch of things in no trust. Um, I'm currently blocked on um, the libpdp dynamic injection issue which uh, kind of affects all of my modules, not just rendezvous. So I'm mainly blocked by adding rendezvous as a PDP module to IPFS. And that also blocks uh, adding rendezvous to Peerstar app. And uh, the problem is basically accessing Swarm before it gets created is, um, it just doesn't work. It's just a bunch of hacks and that hasn't really gotten attention. So I thought I'd just mention it here again. Um, also, there is another issue with uh, JS PDP TCP. Um, it does not support DNS addresses. That makes moving the servers for no trust painful because I have to update everything manually. And also, I need um, the libpdp daemon uh, for rewriting peer tunnel uh, to use a proper daemon. But uh, I think that isn't going to be finished then. So. I will probably just have to reinvent the wheel again, only for it to be invented, I guess. Um, and that's uh, all I did. And the next things I will do, um, I usually made lists, but never did what was on the list. So let's just say it's a mystery because um, I will pick other tasks anyway. Uh, thank you so much for the update, <laughs> the very honest. Uh, update and lots of things uh we've been working on lots of things and, and it was great to see like the test peer ids app or service uh, as i said during the ipfs lens like consider just like repackage that as a module not as like a http api service because that way we can just like use it on ipfs the controller and like cut our test times um in by i like i expect like 50% or more. Um, if you want to own that, like, so I will like divide the thing in like two, two parts. Like one is getting URSA to repeat crypto. And like, that is like just to, to speed up RSA key generation uh, overall. But then to, to speed up tests is like going to IPFS DCTL and like just have a bunch of pre-generated keys, um, 200, whatever, like uh, that's then when you um, spawn a, an IPF, a daemon factory, 
like you can test like a config option like saying test true and then like instead of like generating keys uh, new keys every single time it spawns a node um it will just like get one uh random key from that key pool that you previously generated so like cutting the test times on JSAPFS API, JSAPFS, and now I like, can drop and, and all of that. Do you do you want to take those two uh, goals for this week, Hachi? Uh Yes, um, about the local module, I already have this Azure key cache module, but uh, I think uh, the idea with having 200 pre-generated keys isn't so bad. So I will look into that. Um, I don't know what the other thing was. I think it was only one, or I missed it. Uh, it just do like so. There is the IP test D add like the pre-generated keys and like add an option to say I want to have a daemon factory in test mode and test mode is really like just use keys that were previously generated. And and like there was an issue. Yeah, exactly. Speed boost. Uh, this is the issue to to Haiti for that. And then the other thing is leap peer to peer crypto should, could, let's try, use URSA. And that will speed up by just RSA key generation as a whole. Uh, and so it would be great to have a pull request to leap peer to peer crypto so that um, we can use that overall, not, not, not just for testing. Um, I already added that as a pull request to leap peer to peer crypto. That's not just okay. specific to test peer IDs. All right. That's so perfect. So uh, let's get that merch then. Okay, cool. cool, cool. Uh, so I guess like um, we need to get this reviewed. Uh, Alan, you want to say something? Yeah, so just to say, Matthew, I, I, I did get in contact with you to say, let's talk about your peer stuff. But David has basically said what I was hoping to to get you to sign up to and, and help with. Um, so that would be super rad. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like you are going to save hours, like dozens of hours in development time because we spent so much time waiting for the freaking tests. Um, so, so yeah, please do that as soon as possible. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Okay, we have six minutes left. Any more questions for Machi or comments? All right, let's go to Alex. Cool. So last week. Uh, I implemented proper uh, release support for um, MFS. So that's all in merge and release, which is cool. Uh, and then I picked up uh, doing NPM on IPFS again. Um, does anyone want to see a demo? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Share the screen. Let's top one. Can everyone see that? Yeah, we can. Yep. We see all your terminals. Yeah, so I'm running the JS IPFS daemon, just standard. So registry mirror, uh, there's this no clone command, just uh, just means don't download npm in the background, because uh, it just, at the moment, all the all the write requests stop the read requests from, from uh, executing until they can find a slot. Um, but I'll come on to that. So I start that off, so now it's running, uh, and it tells me that I can use this flag to, to do an npm install. Uh, and in, in this folder, I just have, I have a package.json uh, that just has one dependency in it, David, written by Alan, obviously, which is a really nice one to download because it downloads npm itself, um, which has loads of releases, so there's a lot of kind of background activity that goes on. Um, so run command, so I'm going to remove the node modules folder, remove the package lock file, remove npm's cache, and then run npm install with our uh, uh, with our proxy. Dun, dun, dun. So you can see it's all downloading on the side. Right? Sweet. I love the logs and the emojis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> emojis everywhere this is so good like it, it looks so much better than it was <laughs> in the past which is like just you you never knew what was happening <laughs> yeah but there you go so Please. that's that's that downloaded now so it's finished downloading and now npm's just working everything out so there you go so 30 seconds to download it 
Um, I can wow. prove that that was that was using IPFS because if I if I shut the the IPFS daemon down and I do the same thing, it should um, it should yeah. So then it craps out. Yeah, because some kind of errors. Yeah, eConnect refuse. So that's that. Um, this is super super cool. Uh, really great. Um, I love it. Like, is it this what is on master? Like. Uh, I was trying to like, just understand if I could use it yesterday. I didn't mm -hmm. like into the code because I didn't have the time, but like because the readme was not up to date. Uh, sure. Well, is, uh, is just, this what it, is on, on um, the repo, like on master or? I uh, just pushed a branch. Uh, it's not merged into master yet. Okay. Uh, can we can we get like it merged on master and like just yeah. update the readme and like start inviting people to test it out as well? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Victor, you got a question? Yeah, could you could you run it again with the because now the packages should be cached, right? Uh, yeah, so this is actually running with the packages cached already. Um, this morning it was taking about a minute, and now because America has woken up, something's got really slow, and it takes about five or six minutes. So I didn't want to do that in a demo, um, but I can, if you like, I can show you it without the cache. No, I, w I was thinking, so you you run it to follow and to proxy and then to cache all the packages, right? So the first time you run it, yep. it goes to the proxy and then the proxy goes to NPM, right? But the second time you install it, without the cache in your local client, the registry should have the packages cached, right? Yeah, exactly. So instead of taking 30 seconds, it should be way less, right? Um, well, uh, no, that was that was with it cache. So if I do it with, I see. All right. If I do it with the npm cache locally. Npm still takes a lot of time because it has like to like dedupe all the dependencies. Yeah, that last like chunk of time where it just kind of it looked like it stalled. It, that was the deduping and then moving stuff around. See, this is it going off to NPM to, to actually do everything. So that was 18 versus, versus 30. So there's some improvements that can be made, but it's broadly comparable, at least in an order of magnitude. This is really sweet. I agree with Alan. Like you should demo it at the Alan's. It's going to get the crowd mad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so if I may ask, and I know you have like always, uh, like as everyone, a ton of things, but like if you have the time to like uh, update the repo, like get it this all in master, make it really nice for other people to try, and then record like a demo, explain like what is happening, so that sure. you can put it on like the IPFS channel. And then like mm -hmm. also like a demo at our hand so that people out there can see it. But, mm -hmm. but just like, just like remind the world that like IPFS is great for package managers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, no problem. And, and yeah, yeah. So um, cool. All right. I don't have any more questions. Just excitement to share. Any questions for Alex? Yeah. Like so. I, I guess like, is this ready for prime time? Should like, should we, the JS Core dev team, start using this cache to install our dependencies?